All right, welcome back to another gun store vlog. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and you are watching Marksman TV. So, today's question of the week is going to revolve around opening a gun store and should you do it? Does it make any sense? Is there any money really still left in operating your own gun store, especially now moving into 2019? Also, I did get in some really cool police retired firearms. Now, for those of you just joining us, the question of the week is at the end of the video. If you are only here for the question of the week, just look on down in the comment section. I will have pinned to the top the timestamp for the questions. You can skip ahead. Otherwise, let's go ahead and start now. Okay, so one of the things we get in a lot is the surplus stuff. So I did just get in a shipment of retired police surplus firearms, including these US Police Model 5903s, double stack 9mm. This is back kind of in the 90s when these um, kind of the metal frame uh, Smith & Wesson semi-automatics are really prevalent now. They don't make them anymore. There's a whole series of different lines that they used to make in different calibers and sizes, and there are collectors of these things, you know, just, just the Smith uh, metal frame lines in and of themselves, but very reliable, double single action. These were used by a lot of police departments back in the 90s, and we're starting to see them sort of pop up on the surplus market as retired police handguns. Now these are typically carried often but shot very little, so you can really get yourself a good deal on one of these. Uh, even if you're looking for your first firearm or something that's gonna be just a beater, very reliable little handguns. Another one I got in are retired US Police 92 FSs. Now these are not to be uh, confused with the 92 S's out of Italy. This is actually a 92 FS. So there's not really a, a lot to say about these that you guys don't already know. And um, along with that, I have a couple of the compact models. These are actually pretty tough to find and pretty, pretty, desi pretty desirable. But again, they're all you know kind of beat up. They've been used, but good, uh, good way to get into one pretty cheap. And then Hungarian police Feg high power pistols as well, single action only. Um, really nice if you like the Browning high power and you want it to get into one cheap. These are a great option as well. So if you guys have been watching the vlogs, you've seen I've gotten in the Star BMs and the Tokarev M57s and the VZ 72s and 50s. And you know, so we just like to get in stuff like this. Our customers really like to see us get it in. So anyway, that's all I have for you there. All right, so that was really quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into the question of the week. And actually the question of the week was inspired by somebody who actually lives local to our store, but I don't think has been in here yet but as a viewer of the channel and has uh, sent me an email. So his name is Nick. Uh, he wants to get into starting his own gun store. And he sent me some questions, which I think is pretty smart to find people. If you're looking to get into any industry, try and find people who have been at least in the industry for a little while and ask them some questions about it and kind of get their opinion before jumping in with both feet, which is pretty much what Nick here did. Also, sort of uh, emailing me questions. I'm hearing from more and more of you guys through Facebook and my email. I'm going to leave my email address down in the description. If you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I do get really busy, but when I can try and find the time, I will try and reach out, uh, reach back to you guys and answer those questions or I can uh, compile them into like a monthly Q&A or something like that. I am coming up on 20,000 subscribers, so thank you guys for that so much. Hopefully, I'm hoping by Christmas or maybe by the new year, I will definitely hit 20,000, I'm hopeful for that. So if you guys can send me some questions before then, I'll do a 20,000 subscriber special Q&A. So anyway, without further ado, uh, Nick was in the military and without going into too much of his personal details, which he did tell me in the email, he. Uh, basically had a, a medically discharged, so he was uh, injured after serving several years in the military. And uh, now that he is uh, kind of in the process of switching over to more civilian life, uh, he's thinking about pursuing an option of getting into opening a gun store. So like I mentioned, he sent me a series of questions and I asked him if it was okay if I answered these questions directly to all of you guys, because this is actually something that a lot of people have been asking me about, uh, both my friends and family, and you know, again, a lot of people here on YouTube and customers in my store. So without further ado, he broke this into uh, to kind of several different questions, so we'll go through them. Question number one, what is the stability of the industry? 
Do you fear that all of your work could be lost overnight? Or do you feel like someone as established as you uh, will have enough of a customer base that legislation or competition, mainly online, would not be a concern? Like if you take a vacation or shut your doors temporarily, would you be okay? So that's kind of a multi-parted question. Let's unpack that. So the first part of that is, uh, what is the stability of the industry? So to be perfectly honest, the industry right now isn't very stable at all. What we saw, let's go back before the, uh, and I'm gonna, gonna use my, my local market as sort of an example for this. So what we saw before Obama entered presidency and my entire kind of the Indianapolis area, which is a pretty large city in, in the United States, we had probably four brick and mortar gun stores. And then we had a Gander Mountain. Uh, some of you are from some areas, you might not know Gander Mountain. It's kind of like a Cabela's or a Bass Pro Shop. It's a big uh, box retailer in hunting outdoor and they s sell a lot of firearms. Uh, so if you wanted a firearm 10, 12, 15 years ago in Indianapolis, you basically had four different stores. That you, that's, that's from the entire Indianapolis area. Okay, then Obama goes into office and gun demand explodes because we start hearing about a lot of legislation and all these uh, bans that are gonna be taking place. So demand absolutely skyrockets. And just like anything else, when we see a huge amount of demand, we see a lot of competitors enter the marketplace because there's a lot of capacity there. A lot of new players can come in and actually be successful because of all the demand that's going around. The four gun stores in Indianapolis can no longer hold the demand that started to boom. Then we get through Obama's second term, and at the end, uh, or the beginning of Obama's second term, or maybe it was at the end, I can't remember, it was, it was right there, we had uh, Sandy Hook happen, and then that's when uh, firearm demand was at its peak. And keep in mind, in all demand curves, in all industries, this is what the demand looks like. The demand curve, it peaks and it valleys. In some industries, it happens very quickly. In some industries, it happens gradually over a long period of time. But the firearm industry, again, is it, just like anything else, it peaks and it valleys. And we were up at the peak in 2013. And that's the period where we went from having four gun stores in our local market to maybe having 15, 20, 25, even up to 30 is probably where we are now. So just absolutely boomed. And then we opened our store in that kind of big boom, and that was in 2014, because when we looked at the marketplace, we just saw all this potential. So then we get to the 2016 election, and I basically know one of two things is going to happen. Clinton's gonna win, and that demand is going to continue going up even higher, or Trump's gonna win, and the demand is gonna start falling off. And of course, Trump won, and like I predicted, like everybody kind of predicted, the demand started dropping off, and we still haven't seen the bottom of that sort of drop in demand yet. Because what we do is month every single month, NICS, uh, which is you know what where we're doing our background checks, National Instant Criminal Background Check System, um, they put out a report every single month that uh, tells us how many background checks have been done, you know, locally and state by state or nationally handguns, long guns, others, uh, 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 gun permit, background checks, and all that sort of things that, that happen. Uh, so we have noticed that actually the background checks month over month over month in 2018 have still been down month over month over month since 2017. In fact, if we go back to the height of the demand curve to now in 2018, the industry has taken about a 30% hit. Now, of course, we can only look at background checks to make that prediction because there is no national database for firearms owners, which is fantastic. Of course, lots of private transactions happen, um, you know, between individual buyers and all those transactions are not being counted in that number. But if we're just using background checks done by gun stores as a general rule of thumb, demand is down about 30%. Plus the two only publicly traded gun manufacturers in the United States, Ruger and Smith & Wesson, had both also been reporting losses quarter over quarter, except for just recently, Smith & Wesson did report their first, I believe it's their first profit since the election, and a lot of that can be attributed to the new Outdoors brand that they've just created, I think, last year. So that's kind of saving them there. But they have shown some positive upward trend in their firearm sales 
And they have been creative with some promotions and stuff they've been doing, but that's going off on a different vein. So to kind of get to that point is we are in an industry that is very heavily contracted. So 30% demand, just think about that. The industry, the entire market that existed, all those gun stores, those 30 or 40 individual gun stores that exist in and around the Indianapolis area, maybe it's closer to 30, um, all that demand that everybody was sharing has just been contracted by one third, and that's nationwide. That's huge. That's like that's like close to the demand that the airlines lost after 9/11. To put that in perspective for you, my dad actually worked in the airlines, so that's a, that's a kind of a example that he and I discuss sometimes. So that is an industry crippling loss of demand, and so when somebody asks, okay, what's the volatility of the market like right now? It's pretty volatile. It's a pretty bad market to be in. Um, if you're well established, you can weather the storm. Uh, not necessarily the type of market that you want to be looking at entering. So just keep that in mind. And I'll talk more about this a little bit later. We knew that I mean, I knew, I remember I stayed up until two or three in the morning when they finally called the election for Trump. I knew at that moment, um, and I'm not trying to talk about the political outcome. I'm just talking about what the election did for gun sales. I mean, I knew it was going to, gun demand was going to plummet. And I made the decision right then and there. I said, there's a lot of things that I'm going to have to do if we're going to survive this. One of them was YouTube. And man, I'm glad I started this channel. <laughs> so uh, it's gotten me in touch with a lot of people both at work in the industry and customers too. So in order to kind of make it through a low demand period like this, you really have to to uh, work hard and kind of think outside the box. You can't just open a gun store. It's not going to work. Um, or just, you know, do the every day, you know, sell a couple guns over the counter without innovating at all. It's not going to work. We did a whole bunch of other stuff too. And this isn't, this video isn't really about what we did, but I'm just saying it's it's a huge obstacle that all gun stores are trying to fight right now. Um, and I mean, the landscape also, so many have gone out of business. And typically when you have a market where established uh, gun stores that have been around for a long time are starting to drop like flies, that's typically a good sign that it's a market you don't yet want to enter. Of course, when you start a business, you're going to need all the boosts and morale and push that you can get. And on a de detracting market, that's just not going to happen. Uh, the people who have been there before you, the established businesses, are already kind of fighting for scraps. And it's like having, you know, a couple pit bulls in a fighting ring and then, you know, they're fighting over the scraps of food and you're just a little young pup kind of being thrown in. You're kind of not going to stand too much of a chance unless you have a lot of backing behind you. What I mean by that is if you have a lot of money behind you that you can afford to lose uh, and start with a really big store with a really big inventory, uh, undercut your competitors and, um, and uh, what do I wanna say? Like uh, put out huge ad campaigns and really start fast and big, then that's probably gonna be your only chance of beating out other really established businesses. So let's uh, get into the next part of this question. So I uh, wanted to know stability of the industry. Do you feel fear that all of your work could be lost overnight? Overnight, no. Uh, everybody fears in any business, no matter how big your business is, you should always have a healthy amount of fear uh, that you could go out of business. If you don't, if you get complacent, fat, and lazy, then your competitors will take advantage of that and they will come up with other ideas to, to, to take that market share from you. Even in a thriving business, in a thriving market, in a thriving economy, you should still always be worried um, about that sort of thing happening. And of course, on top of that, we are a new business. I mean, I don't really consider myself successful yet. I'm not really quite where I want to be. I'm still growing. We've only been here four and a half years, so I don't expect myself to be there. Now I am really happy with how things are going, but that still doesn't mean that I'm, I'm happy with where we are or that, you know, kind of we're at an in place and stop worrying or anything like that. Anything could happen. The only thing that's going to kill businesses overnight is if they, uh, you know, ban guns or something like that. That would kill us overnight, but nothing else really would kill us overnight. Uh, a slow death, if the market continues to get worse and worse and worse and worse and even worse than it is now, sure, that could kill us and anybody else very slowly. And again, we're already seeing that happen time and time and time again with other gun stores. 
So, you know, do I feel comfortable that I have a large enough customer base that legislation and competition online isn't a concern? It's always a concern. Legislation is always a concern. It always should be a concern, and the competition is always a concern. Um, my competitors are, they're smart people, and they are trying actively every day to take market share from me and from everyone else. If you enter the new, you know, if you enter uh, with a new gun store, you know, your competitors, the people in the market that you are entering are going to immediately try and do everything they can to take business from you because that's how they make money. That's how they grow. And there's only so much of it to go around. So yes, um, always a concern. Um, is it a huge concern? Again, are we teetering on the edge of bankruptcy or closing our store? No, and we're far from it. But again, I'm still concerned that we could start heading that direction at any time. And this is the perfect environment that that could happen in if we, if we get complacent or don't play our cards right. If I were to take a vacation or shut my doors temporarily, would we be okay? Yes, in fact, I just took my first vacation uh, in July. I closed my doors for, this is kind of funny. I closed the doors of my store for a week and yeah, it was July to go on vacation. It's the first vacation I have taken in four and a half years since we opened this place. I have actually not even taken more than a two day weekend in those four and a half years. If you start any business, you really have to be prepared to just basically live there uh, for several years. It's called sweat equity. You're putting in a lot of time. And that's, I'm gonna go off in a little vein. That's what drives me nuts about people who are upset with these big CEOs of all these uh, corporations making so much money. You have absolutely no idea how much time and energy and work and sweat and blood and tears and money in those first years that they were putting their business together and getting it off the ground. It's because of all that hard work that you're not getting paid for, that at the end of your career, when your business is finally successful and you're able to pay yourself more than your employees that are working for you, uh, that's that's what you work towards. So you take that big salary at the end of your life and spread it over the entire time that you spent getting there, that's your fair pay. So I'm not getting paid yet for, for what the work I'm doing, but maybe in the future I'll, make, I'll compensate for that and all small business owners I uh, hope to get to that point. So, uh, yeah, so I did close my doors for a, for a week, completely closed down the store. I didn't want to have to worry about it at all. I uh, left the country with my family and, you know, had a really good time not worrying about it. My customer base, I was really concerned I would lose customers, you know, from being closed for a week. Actually, everybody is was super, super awesome about it. And that's one thing. The, the coolest thing about the store is my customer base. They really are like a family. It's it's it sounds really cheesy to say that, but they really are. I mean, I mean, a lot of my customers are like have become really close friends. So, uh, just awesome group of people. And number three, this is what a lot of people like to know: What is the money like? I understand that. Uh, many, in fact, most won't be as successful as you. That's very kind of you to say. I'm not, again, I don't consider myself where I want to be yet. Success success is a relative term in, in terms of I can operate this place and pay myself a reasonable living. I, You know, that's successful, I guess. Um, but do you think if I establish a small foothold in the market that it wouldn't be as risky an investment as people make it out to be? I guess my simple question is, if you had a family member ask, should I open a store, would you recommend it? Or what would your answer be? But anyway, let's go ahead and, and back up. What's the money like? So, it's not great, <laughs> or just being honest. Um, here's, a, here's a good rule to go by. Other gun store owners or attendants that want to jump in on this one, feel free to if you want to share that information. A, this is how I will put it. A very, very small retail store that's well established um, maybe with about a thousand to three thousand square feet, with maybe an inventory of one to three hundred guns. Probably the owner of that store is going to make in the neighborhood of thirty thousand dollars a year. Okay, if they have multiple locations, you know, consider multiplying that by thirty thousand. So a guy has three small stores in in you know, two over two states. Maybe he's making ninety thousand. Or we'll just leave that at that. Now, there's other ways you can bring in money too. Uh, for us, YouTube has been a great stream of revenue. 
our online retail has been a great stream of revenue. So I, I'm not gonna disclose exactly how much it is that I make, but I will say it's not a lot. For the amount of hours you work, it's not a lot. Um, you do it because you love it. You will make a good, you know, uh, it's not something that like, for example, my wife works. I wouldn't be prepared. We're, we live a very like middle class lifestyle. Um, we wouldn't be prepared to like have her start work, stop working and like, you know, work solely on my income. Keep in mind, I've only been here for four and a half years as well. So I don't really have a huge barometer for answering this question, but, um, you know, take that for what you will. It's not a huge money maker. Now there are people in the industry that do make a lot of money. Uh, now I can only speculate how much money these people make, but big wholesalers, uh, big online retailers like Buds or uh, Sportsman's or Brownells, I'm sure make a good amount of money. Um, but those are also businesses that have been growing since like the 70s in most cases. And I mean, they've been there for 40 or 50 years and they basically built the industry. So and nobody's gonna get, the, if you wanna get to that size of income in this industry, it has to be a lifetime commitment and you really have to be a trailblazer and innovate a lot and kind of set yourself apart. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to touch on. Oh, would I recommend opening a gun store in 2019? That's kind of the crux of this question. And I'm being honest, he asked, if a family member asked me, I would basically say the short answer is no. It's not something I would recommend. Now we know that markets work like this and the gun industry works like this too. And we're currently doing this, which is a bad time to invest. Think about stocks, you know, when, when a stock is tanking, you dump the stock, you don't buy into the stock. Well, some people buy into the stock because they know it'll recover and they got it cheap. But anyway, um, you sort of wait until you start thinking that you're starting to get into an upward trend and then you buy in and then you can ride that wave, right? Um, it's, it's, it's the same with the gun industry. It's not something I would really wholly recommend. Now, also a huge mistake <coughs> that a lot of small business people make, and in my opinion, is the uh, biggest reason that small businesses go out of business is not having enough money. And the number one piece of advice I give to people who want to start any business is write out a business plan Know exactly how long, I mean, and be conservative in every estimate. Know how much money is it likely going to cost you to operate in year over year. And nobody can answer that question for you. Do you need to pay yourself? If so, how? what is the least amount you can pay yourself to get by? What's your rent gonna cost? What's your insurance gonna cost? How much are you going to invest in upfront and inventory? Um, you know, all these sorts of things you need to think about. Um, and what you need to do is you basically need to take, I'm just taking a round number, say it's $50,000, okay? It's, it's gonna be a lot more than that, but say $50,000 is what it's gonna cost you to operate in a single year. And then stretch that, out, stretch that out over five years and assume you are going to not make money at all those five years. And take that, so 50,000 times five, it's $250,000. If you don't have access to that amount of money, then don't do it, don't open. You need to, whether it's through loans, a line of credit, whether it's through family members, or whether it's through your own personal savings, however you wanna finance it. The problem is, is all, not all, but 90% of small businesses will lose money in their first to third years. Okay, and then what a lot of people do is they, they don't plan for that, and a lot of people, when your bank account runs out, it doesn't matter if you're starting to do well, if you can't make your rent payments, you can't pay your suppliers, you can't pay your employees, you can't pay yourself, you have to close. You have to, you're forced into it. So you don't allow yourself to put in all that time and energy and investment to just run out of money. Because at the end of the day, again, that's why everybody closes is they run out of money. That's, that's what kills you. So don't allow yourself to run out of money and you're going to run out of money fast in a market like this. Uh, when you don't have anything, you have no customer base, you have no reputation, you have nothing to support you. And uh, that's just my recommendation there. But guys, that's where I'm going to leave it with those answers to those questions. And thank you uh, again so much, Nick, for uh, for sending these to me and uh, you know letting me share them with everybody else. If any of you guys have questions, again, send those to me. My email address is down in the description box 
or you could just leave them down in the comment section. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts or uh, criticism or anything about th these questions that I just answered, feel free to chime in with those as well down in the comment section. Please leave me a like on this video, subscribe, turn on the notifications if you would like to see more content. Again, I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV, and I will see you next time.